Autumn. It's the perfect time of year for a nice walk in the park. But rain and mud mean that when you get home, the dirt and leaves stuck to your shoes may ruin your carpet. One brilliant solution comes from coconuts, or the coconut husk to be more precise. Coconut husk fiber, known as qua, is used to make doormats. Its antibacterial properties help to kill germs. It's absorbent, which traps water, and most importantly, it's tough, which helps remove unwanted dirt. Coconut fiber doormats start their lives here. Miles of the qua are woven into long threads which are kept on big spools. These reels feed the mat-making machine. It takes the fiber from six coconuts to make just one doormat, so the factory needs a plentiful supply. When a reel runs low, it's connected to another one to keep a continual feed to the machine. The worker must weave the reels together because any knots would jam the whole system. The mat machine sits like a big spider at the center of an enormous coconut thread web. 400 lines are fed simultaneously through these holes to form the basis for the doormats. Now, to make a mat using this coconut husk, the secret ingredient is glue. The fibrous threads aren't woven together, they all sit vertically on the mat. The glue is used as a foundation for the threads. First, this guillotine slices the fibers into the right lengths. These lengths then fall into the glue base waiting below. As the knife slices through the fiber, the shape of the funnel forces the pieces to fall vertically where they land in the waiting glue. In the case of this doormat, the fiber lengths are cut to about 16 millimeters, the perfect height for cleaning a pair of trainers or muddy hiking boots. The fibers are pressed to make sure they're seated firmly and the whole glue fiber combination is then passed over a large heating plate. This hardens the glue and seals the bristles into place. To keep quality up, the workers take regular samples from each roll of new doormat. The first test they must undergo is the strength test. Using a tension device and a pair of pliers, the worker will analyze how much pressure is needed to wrench the bristles free from the glue base. If the bristles survive more than six kilos of pressure, they've passed. The next test measures the mat's resilience. This robotic device looks like it's from a sci-fi film set, but it's not that sophisticated. Its job is to walk up and down continually. This simulates many hours of use and tests how durable the doormat is. And one of the most important qualities of the modern doormat is absorbency. To help stop mud and water coming into your home, it's important they can trap liquid effectively. No damp footprints mean the coconut fiber is doing its job well. With the quality assured, the doormats can now be cut into shape. First, the rough edges are cut off and a haircut follows. Using a guillotine which looks like a lawnmower, this machine will trim the fibers down to a uniform length. Next comes the shape. Many mats can be cut from each new roll. The workers collect them up and they're sent on to the print department. Popular designs range from a big welcome sign to the colors of your favorite football team. The logos will be applied here. First, a layer of glue is laid down corresponding to the desired shape. This is then followed by several different layers of statically charged colored flakes.
The flakes stick to the glue and a picture eventually emerges. The static helps attract dirt from the user's shoes, so even the picture on the mat helps to keep your house clean. The final step is to clean the mats off. During the production process, plenty of dirt and fibers may have been caught and no one wants to buy a dirty mat. These machines dislodge anything that may be stuck in place. And finally, the mat is finished. So, having started life protecting the flesh of the coconut, the Qua now protects your home from dirty shoes.